What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Before we start today's video, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Frankenstein Creations. Run by brothers Garrett and Steen, with the help of their friends Justin and Alex, these two brothers make gear for scare actors by scare actors. From the well-detailed mask design to haunt equipment that you may need, they actually sculpt, mold, and airbrush all their original designs. And they know what it's like to have a tight mask or an uncomfortable one during the season. So they took you into consideration when designing these masks. Go check out frankensteincreations.bigcartel.com and see if they have anything you can use this Halloween or haunt season. And a very special thank you to Frankenstein Creations for being the sponsor of today's video. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? I got some very special guests with me today on the Miles War Podcast. All the way from La Puenta, California. Hell yeah! Talis. What's How we doing up, today, guys? gentlemen? How we doing? We're doing chill. Good. We're chill. We're chill. Good. It's Easter, Easter Sunday. Sunday. I did absolutely nothing, but it doesn't take away from <laughs> hey, the man, fact Easter that Easter Sunday, I you know, we're just we're just here chilling. I, I was watching the Dodger. I was hungover because I was at the Dodger game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. All right. That's what Easter Sunday's for. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have to say right off the bat, fellas, I love the album. It's oh, so thank good. You. Thank, thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Yes, and and you guys, what caught my attention first? Um, was my buddy Mooch, Paul, we call him Mooch. Um, we're, we're metalheads. We love all of it. And we were scrolling through TikTok one day and he sent me a TikTok from you guys. And I heard the music and I was blown away of what I heard. I, I really was. Um, it, it was something that was, it gave me feels of that classic heavy metal vibe again. And you don't feel that with a lot of today's music. Um, and, and and when you guys were advertising, if you guys like the Big Four, come listen to us. I love the Big Four, and I listened to you, and I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure we're, we're going to have to start a Big Five pretty soon. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, yeah. Slayer already retired. So yeah. Slayer retired. Yeah. We're taking the spot. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Um, the first, the debut album from the Cryogenics. Talk to me about yeah. it. What was the mindset behind making this album? You guys, I know you guys have been together since, I believe, what, 2015? Um, yeah, and now about, the yeah. debut album is here. Talk to me. How, how did this come together? What was the idea process behind it? What, what were you guys thinking when you guys were making this album? Oh, yeah. Well, this is, this is a uh, this is a really oh, big thing. You know Why don't we introduce ourselves? You know what? Yeah, oh, right. yeah, oh, yeah. I got too excited. I jumped the gun. <laughs> so, <laughs> we do the same thing real quick. Yeah. Let's yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> names and, and instruments you guys play. All right. Um, hi, everyone. My name is uh, Luis Velasquez, and I play drums. Hi, I'm Austin Spencer. I do uh, guitar and some backup vocals. I am Sergio Montes de Oca. I am lead guitar and vocals. And I am Vincent Avalos, and I play bass. Yo, Sometimes man. backup vocals. <laughs> yeah, I love the. I love me some bass. Hey, I'm just saying. I like that. Yeah. Yo, everybody yeah. loves his bass. Everybody loves his bass. Like, everybody loves some of the most iconic songs that have really good bass riffs. I'll name one right off the top of my head. Uh, Cliff Burton's bass solo in Kill 'Em All. There you yeah. go. Yeah. And it's classic. iconic. Man, what's, what's that, that Merciful Fate song? Um, it's from like, ah, man, I can't, I can't even don't remember. Break the don't, don't break uh, the oath. Don't break the pretty good. Welcome merciful Fate. Is it? Ah, I can't I remember. It. Either, yeah, it's probably, it's either, either welcome, yeah, it's probably, yeah, no, hell, yeah, we just got like a whole overload on the brain right now. It's going to take us forever to get back. <laughs> yeah, we are Mortellus, and yeah. there's a little bit. So here, we'll, we'll get the history. history. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. FTC, for sure. FTC. FTC. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I guess um, kind of going back into it, right, we, we spent like about almost six years in the making with this album. Like it, it, was a, it was a really big journey in terms of where we started to where it is that we have now. And, and luckily, in being in the position where we're at right now. So this, uh, I mean, this kind of starts almost like with the beginning of the band almost when um, most of the songs that, uh, that you see on there like were written almost that far back, honestly. Uh, there's very little that honestly changed up to the point where we started introducing Austin. He ended up putting in his own song, 
and his own twist into some of the few other songs that we ended up going back and reworking. But in terms of where it really all started was uh, kind of a midway point where we were uh, kind of like already towards the end. Um, we were kind of seasoned within our little scene around um, over here in like L.A., San Bernardino. We've been playing for like maybe about four years or so. And we were like, you know what? It's time to really buckle down and make an album because it's like that's the next logical step for us to start moving forward and, you know, keep progressing in what it is that we wanted to do. Uh, little did we know back then that it was going to be uh, much more of a journey than <laughs> you initially <laughs> thought it was going to be. A lot of work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there was, uh, there, there was just so many different attempts and trying to get this album in out of the way. And it was uh, it, honestly like we're so happy with how it came out and just the quality and the bar of where it's at right now. And it's it, it just, just after so many like trenches in and out because uh, I think the first attempt that we ended up starting to get the album in, um, it was over with, um, I believe it was, was it Joe was the first uh, like real attempt, right? No, it was actually. Uh, no, 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 it was even before that. Yeah, yeah. Before that, <laughs> yeah we had a, this was like, Pretty shortly after I joined, so I think I'm close yeah, to like February. Or something. This is pretty, yeah, I joined like late, like 2017, I think this was early 2018 or something. We started to work with somebody at a studio and stuff, and they were kind of starting up, and we were figuring out what we were doing, and we just kind of had a lot of, you know, back and forth. We were, we were learning, because we had no clue what the hell we were doing. You know, we, we, throughout the whole process, we learned a ton of stuff regarding audio recording, any kind of like mixing, mastering, just playing our instruments better, what's going to mesh well, what isn't. But we started out with that, and man, we recorded, and then it wasn't exactly perfect. So we did it again, and again, yeah. and again. We did it like three or four times this kind of way, and it was either our guitars weren't lined up properly, or something sounded funky with the drums, or there were some effects, or that sometimes the recording sessions ended up being so spaced out that things just didn't mesh well, it didn't sound, it didn't sound cohesive. Right. So after a lot of trouble, we ended up uh, moving on to another buddy of ours, uh, our buddy Joe Salcedo. We ended up recording once or twice with him. Yeah, yeah, it was twice. Yeah, oh, yeah, he was he was in the process of a move. So because he's done a lot of recording for a lot of local bands and stuff like that around the area, he did a lot of stuff, especially twenty fourteen to like twenty eighteen, that kind of whole area. Right. And he was in the middle of a move. We were doing a bunch of stuff. We recorded kind of once, and then we ended up doing it again. And then, like, his computer blew up. Oh, my <laughs> like, God. Ross, like, hard drive, like, fried, shit. computer done. He has since gotten, like, a bunch of new stuff because it's just that computer completely wow. just took shit. It shit the bed. It was so bad. Yeah. Yeah, there was wow. so many hours just down the drain from there. Yeah. So. And that was probably, like, our, like, sixth attempt. And this was probably, like, two years into trying, right. I think. And so it was definitely... That was another, that was, that was tough. You know, it's just technological letdowns. And eventually we got to our last guy that we recorded with, who is Dave Klein, who owns a studio in Highland Park out of, his, out of his house. He has a great studio there, an amazing setup. And we did record, like, kind of twice with him. We did, like, drums once, and then tried to do some stuff, and then we ended up doing drums. We kind of, like, overhauled them all. Like, Lewis did a lot of work to overhaul them all. And simplify stuff, make stuff mesh well better, let's make it all better. So that was kind of our final attempt. And so Dave really helped us a lot. And he was really the one that we learned a lot from because we spent, you know, sometimes we'd spend 11 hours over at the studio <laughs> yeah. and it's like, cool. Well, the whole time we're asking questions. We're learning this and that. We're figuring out what to do, what not to do. Cause some of it was even recorded at my house. Cause in between this, I set up a whole studio and like he set up his own little studio. So like we all have our own stuff and we learned so much from that experience really that, yeah. that, that some of it's not even, you know, just self recorded by us. And then of course Dave mixed and mastered it and stuff. So yeah, well, while things were going good, COVID hit. And yeah. Then, uh, yeah. Perfectly. Yeah, back yeah. Even, more. even then while we were like on a roll trying to get through things like COVID ended up hitting like a, like a literal truck. So we were like kind of almost ready to release things and have that be like a steady thing. But like COVID just ran things like straight into the ground. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just been like fertile after fertile. But the good thing is just the fact that, you know, after we ended up meeting Dave and no ill will to anyone that we've like worked with. Before, yeah. yeah. It was right. all good experiences. We all learned and, and yeah, we all do it, all do it together. Yeah. yeah we, we all did really good. And I think um, just and ending up going over with Dave, like it took, um, it took a lot more time than we initially thought. And we were trying to push for things. But at the end of the day, it was just a matter of patience. And it was, it was really great because we ended up getting rewarded incredibly like beyond any of our wildest dreams we thought like 
Honestly, we, we generally thought this was going to just like be, oh, you know, Never what, had release it and then <laughs> nobody's going to care or whatever. Just get it out yeah. of the way kind of thing. And with the, the, the surmountable amount of like people being interested, checking us out, the, so many more listens as it continuously goes on. You yourself coming over here on this podcast, inviting us out. And I stuff had you. Been... I had you. I was like, local metal band. <laughs> the music's good. I need to get to know these guys because they're going to blow up one day and I'm going to look back and just be like, man. <laughs> there I it was. Like years ago. Exactly. Got to guess while, while we're fresh. Well, they're fresh. There you right? go. Exactly. I mean, yeah. fresh, authentic, raw. It's all there. The talent is there. The music's great. I mean, me and my friends are constantly playing it at, at, at photo. I was just at a photo meet um, Friday night, and I was playing your guys' music to get me pumped up into oh, yeah. the mindset as to what I'm going to record and whatnot. Oh, we, that's we, great. Yeah, you're too I mean, kind. Love that. <laughs> yeah, we just used the Metal Way for our new channel trailer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank yeah, you yeah. so much for that. So as much, I love helping people. I love getting people like to get hopefully on the right on the right path on on where to go from here. And you guys have already started that path. I'm hoping I can just help you guys get get there a little bit quicker too. You know what I mean? Just get the the recognition, the publish, the you know publicity out there. That way you guys hopefully get more gigs and eventually we'll see you guys on an Ozfest or a Notfest lineup. (laughs) That's what we're hoping. That's the name of the game. That's what we're hoping. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Just. Speaking on that same note, too, right, Um, because one of the biggest things was just like what we were talking about just a little bit earlier, but like the influence that this has kind of had like out of our own hands. But just recently, even yesterday, we ended up um, hanging out with a small little fan that came over to our skate park show. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. that was a fun, good show. It was was good to meet a fan. That was honestly like, I think we messaged him first on like social media. We were talking to like his dad. They're like, oh, we want to come out to a show and stuff. And it was so cool. You know, there's pictures on our our Instagram account, Mortalis Official, where you can see like. We were able to, you know, they, we raffled off a, a board for him and everything that we had and stuff. Nice. And it was so cool to meet, you know, just a, a young a fan that young, really. Know, he's right. like eight or ten or something, and yeah. then he comes out over, like, asking his dad. Oh, yeah. Cool. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he just came over with his dad because he'd been wanting to see us uh, after seeing us on TikTok. And, you know, we're so thankful to TikTok as it's brought a bunch of viewers uh, as we were not expecting, honestly. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think I can speak for all of us. I think when we really, at the end of the day, as far as, you know, we love doing what we do, have a great time doing it. Uh, it's just, I think it's kind of like what we want to do is really inspire others to kind of, yeah. you know, do the same or at least do it in their own way. I mean, we all, like, you know, love heavy metal, so. People say it's dead, but I think it's still alive and well. Nuh-uh. Yeah, nope. Just, you know, Never. So, Never dying. We want to <laughs> make sure that we're loud as hell. Oh, Yes. Yeah, you guys are doing a great job keeping it alive. Like I said, when I when I first uh, when I first got in contact with you guys, and I was also listening to the music, uh, what I heard on TikTok, and then you guys, when I started following you guys on Instagram, I started seeing that the album was gonna drop. So then I found it on Spotify, and I was listening to it, and and just you know throughout my my work shift, I was just just trying to listen to the entire uh, the entire album from start to finish. Got it done. I was just blown away by each one of them. I have to say, the Metal Way is probably my favorite, but I, all these songs, man. <laughs> yeah. These guys, you guys have, like, the lyrics are good. Everything is just it's telling this story that I like. I, that's what I love listening to music, too. And I feel like we're starting to, today's music is starting to venture away from that. But no one really tells a story anymore through song. And uh, a lot of what these metal bands did back in the day was told their stories and their, you know, experiences or just fictional stories. Dio was known for doing a lot of mythology, which was freaking awesome. Yeah. You know what fantasy, I mean? yeah. So I think that you guys kind of bringing that, that feel back to actually songs having meaning again and telling stories is just the best thing possible as well, too, especially in the metal community. That's that's what the metal community is built on is stories and, and experiences and whatnot. So. Thank you guys for keeping that alive as well. Oh, of course, yeah. 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 It's what we want to do. So. Yeah. Just yeah. do what we love. So you guys um, just played a show recently at the, the, your, your skate park show. How um, Overall, as far as um, from the, when the album has officially dropped now to uh, where you guys are now, how, how has the show been going? How have people been reacting to what you guys released and whatnot? Yep, okay. start. Back over again. Yeah, yeah no, no. <laughs> it's been really great. I mean, a lot of people are, first of all, just the merch is insane. Like the shirts, <laughs> yeah. the patches. A lot the of support. Pictures. I, I'm sorry, the stickers, I should say. I mean, just, just the overwhelming support for the album. People telling us how good it sounds. And it, I mean, we already get compared to Metallica, for example, a lot. But it's really like 
kind of like cements the idea like dude like when I heard this for the first time I was I could have sworn I was listening to Metallica yeah. yeah stuff like that I mean and you know it's kind of funny too because speaking about the merch or like you know particularly the CDs and stuff it's something we kind of talked amongst ourselves that like, you know like let's let's be honest you know we're entering that modern age where like CD players or just cars alone are starting to be it's so just they, Bluetooth exactly yeah. Bluetooth so we're you know even we're thinking to ourselves you know we want the CDs for that that tangible like you know product that we can say we have it in hand yeah and you know we took a gamble as far as just you know ordering 50 at a time see how that see how the reception was like and instantly they sold out ordered Good. another what like 100 yeah. the, the first yeah. the, the first, the first 50 yeah. were gone we ordered the second 50 and shipped half of them across over into Japan, oh, Japan. wow and then we pretty much by the time that we were like cool we actually got that second 50 we we're like okay they're gone so then we're like okay well we can use the proceeds from this to actually put out even more stuff we could put out you know because we at first we just did the first 100 were CD sleeves right and then we did another 100 we still have some of those for sale right now we've been getting you know selling with shows selling them online stuff like that all around the world really and we actually ended up doing CD cases and everything with lyric booklets and everything live photos and stuff inside so the, uh, the amount of support that we've gotten just, just worldwide has been really impressive and it's allowed us to up the quality of our merch and up the quality of the stuff that we put out there and give back more to the people that want to support us you know because yeah. yeah being able to do you know, lyric booklets and having live photos that are edited and everything and having videos of our shows and all that kind of stuff is because of the support from all the fans that we have everybody from you know, everybody local here, everybody else in the U.S. that we've shipped to, people across all in Europe, in Asia. I mean, people everywhere have bought it. And it's been a, an impressive amount of support that really bolsters our confidence. Right. Now, I mean, you know, I'm listening to the to the music and I'm hearing that you, you mentioned people are saying you guys sound just like Metallica and all that. I'm hearing the mixture of both Metallica and Megadeth. Sometimes when I hear the singing, I can hear a little bit of Dave Mustaine come out. Um, you know, talking about some of these most iconic, I know the big four are a huge influence on you guys, but like uh, individually, what was some of your biggest influences growing up and, and getting into the industry and, and kind of really uh, showcasing your art to the world? Um, I, I can start first yeah, real quick on that. It's just because I got this like in my written at the back of my pocket, <laughs> right now, ready for this exact moment. But uh, no, um, in general, I think I, I went through a lot of phases in terms of like what I was getting into and like even just where I am now and in terms of like how, you know, I even I play the drums now because uh, I actually play traditional grip, which if you don't know, it's kind of like the jazz grip or where you right. flip it over kind of thing. It's weird. Yeah, I'm yeah, a weirdo in saying. terms of the community, like right? kind of stuff, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, we do throw chairs at them too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I think for me, it was just kind of going into phases into where I am now. So I think the three biggest influences, even from when I first started and what even got me into playing drums was... Uh, actually like watching Lars Ulrich from Metallica play like right. in that 89 Seattle video with oh. Master of Puppets that intro going in and all that kind of stuff like that immediately oh, it Hands was down beautiful. the fastest they've ever played Whiplash live by the way exactly it's so beautiful it's impressive and that, that that entire thing was actually what even got me into like buying my own first kit and stuff and that's still something that like I try to it, it's weird because a lot of people hate on like Lars Ulrich for his drum style but it, it's such a unique take on like how to play drums and so anyways, though, that's like what was my first influence in kind of getting into this. What, um, when I started to kind of progress more, and I think when I was digging more deep into like the album that um, Austin was saying, when we were like reworking stuff and trying to tighten things up, um, I started to get into Rush a lot more. So okay. uh, Neil Peart was a significant um, uh, influence in me too for, that, uh, for recording this first record. And just the way that he plays at such a technical level and every single beat lines up uh, like... That's why they call him like the professor. It's like a math equation. Everything is like intended the way that it should be with purpose and intent. And so that was one thing that ended up getting me um, wanting to like progress and just a, a really big influence during the, the the release of the album and kind of like recording uh, phases. Right. And just now, now recently, like towards the end of this, where we're kind of like <laughs> once COVID hit and I had a lot more time to kind of start playing around. Um, I always had this idea of freedom and like wanting to play whatever it is that I wanted to play. And I think um, that encompasses like a lot into jazz drumming. And so I started to kind of get into that a little bit more and like Dave Weckl and a few of the other guys. But Buddy Rich, which if nobody knows, is one of like the greatest drummers of all time. Yep. And he is a master of just any form of beat that you can imagine. He can play that without like any form of like interruption. He's so fluent. And so that's what the kind of freedom that I wanted to kind of have. And 
So I started to get into switching up my entire grip, and since then, uh, that's pretty much the three guys that I've been going back over for, and uh, that's kind of where I've been, like, uh, within my faces yeah. and stuff, but yeah. 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 yeah um, for me, I mean, I wasn't really into music at all until I, until I turned eight, because I was, I didn't, I remember it, because, you know, I, the thing is that, you know, it was like third grade or whatever, and I'd heard that. At my school, I was like, oh, at the end of the year, the, the choir goes to Knott's Berry Farm. And I'm like, oh, okay, I want to go. So I joined <laughs> choir. And then on my birthday, my, my brother, my older brother, who he's, he's 10 years older than me, he'd been playing in a thrash band at the time. And so I was like, oh, okay, maybe I'll try out guitar too. So I joined choir and got a guitar like all at the same time and actually really started listening to music. Because before that, I never listened to anything. I never really paid attention much. You know, I heard stuff on the radio and that was kind of it. But uh, I started learning a bunch of stuff and really... Like, early bands, you know, I started out with Megadeth. I remember it mainly because I watched, you know, there was those uh, VH1 behind the music oh, those uh, are great. documentaries. And I remember my brother sat me down. He's like, okay, we're watching this. I'm like, okay, I watched it. It was one on Megadeth. And I remember I was on a camping trip later, and I didn't recognize any of the music that was on my iPod really because I just loaded a bunch of stuff. My brother had multiple CD booklets, you know, that are just full of tons of CDs and stuff like that. So I didn't really recognize a whole lot of it. Except for like Devil's Island by made off of P cells, and I was like, okay, well, I'll just start here. So I just started with that, and it, it was just looping while I'm like on the camera trip, and I eventually got you know uh, used to it and familiar with it. So I was like, okay, let me branch out to other stuff. And so throughout, you know, obviously the big thrash, uh, all all the big four stuff like that. But outside of that, really more the guys that aren't in the big four. It's really a lot of Overkill and Annihilator Oof. stuff. Yes. Those are like big for me. I mean, I love I love those guys. That's the Testament also early, really early. I mean, even late Testament. Out of all the all the thrash bands, Testament's aged amazingly. So even modern Testament is amazing. Yeah. And then uh, you know I did a, a few things outside because you know of course I play guitar in Mortalis, but in my free time I'll play some bass stuff. And back in high school, a few buddies and I used to play like a ton of just eighties songs, synth pop kind of stuff, and. Yeah, Hall and Oates, Duran Duran, stuff like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. And so, like, this is like more layers yeah. just like feeling back. It's like, it's like I was like, okay, choir boy until I was 18, and also 80s music, and also 80s thrash. And so there's like, it definitely has some it's a wide stuff, variety really. of everything, you know what I mean? Exactly, yeah. yeah. That's, that's the funny thing is that, yeah, throughout, you know, all of that kind of stuff is where I kind of got my appreciation for a little bit, you know, slightly more technical stuff. I'm not a super prog person. But definitely a little bit more on the technical side, especially with like early Annihilator stuff. I just understood it and liked it because of the music theory that I got from doing choir and taking music classes in school and stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, I kind of appreciate that. And also, like he was saying, they're not my favorite band, but you know, Rush, being amazed at the way that they can write in a thousand different time signatures in one song, have a thousand different grooves, and yet it all sounds so completely radio friendly. Yep. It's just mind blowing. So all that kind of stuff, you know, is really it interests me. So. I kind of listen to a lot of, mainly a lot of thrash. It's mainly what I listen to. But if I'm not, it's probably something else out of the 80s. Because that's just a great decade. So. It's, a, it's a fantastic decade. I wish I, uh, wish I could have grown up grown up in the 80s, man. I, I see a lot yeah. of this, I see a lot of these uh, these bands that came up and how concerts were only like $10 to get in. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, like, it's, it's freaking wild. dollars for like really VIP treatment and everything. It's like, God damn. Yeah. yeah. Back, back in the day, you spent 10 bucks. You have to hang out with the band. You have to pretty much mosh with whatever bands were up next. Yeah. And now, yeah, you pay a few hundred bucks and you get a handshake and then you're off. It's, you know, yeah, I, mean, I, I you, could have wished. You think about concerts too, and I, I have to say, even if I were to come see you guys, I'm sorry. I'm the one asshole that has to say free bird in the crowd. <laughs> hey, yo, hey, well, yo, he's the one yeah, asshole that you. Play. Yeah, looking yeah, for you actually know it. Yeah, so, yeah. he's the one guy that's gonna play it. So. Oh, dude, Jeff and right, like, like yes. Shit, Do we want? It? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Devils Rejects. Let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Oh, for me, wow, well, yeah, like, uh, it's it's hard to say even to this day about uh, particular influences. I know that. I mean, hell, if we're going all the way back in time, it's, I actually remember the exact moment I wanted to play guitar. I, I forgot the exact age, but it kind of, it was in that realm when Guitar Hero was big. It just blew up. So, I mean, I think, what, Guitar Hero 2, probably. I don't know how nice. old it was, but I just remember, you know, my cousin had it, so we played at his house. It was awesome. And then, you know, I would look forward to going to Walmart and all that stuff with my mom because I would just, she'll do her thing. And she'll know where I was, you know, in the game section, playing while you're staring up at the ceiling because those TVs <laughs> were all the way up there. And anyway, but there was this one time in Best Buy where I just remember, because by that point, 
I had some experience, but what? I was on easy because I was a kid working on the wow. three out of the five buttons. <laughs> and it was the first time I'd ever seen, it was an older guy, I don't know how old, must have been mid-20s. And he was just blasting this thing on expert. And I just remember asking him, how are you so good? And he straight up just tells me like, oh, I play guitar, like for real. So like, there's just one of those things in my head, like, I want to be good at this. Like, this was dope to me. <laughs> I want to be good at Guitar yeah, Hero. Yeah, guitar not, Hero. Not, not guitar, guitar, just Guitar yeah. Hero. It's just like that one South Park episode. You're going to go pro in Guitar exactly. Hero. Exactly. <laughs> You're going to go pro like that. Yeah. yeah. Pro, yeah. Be the next Randy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, nah, but, uh, yeah, and that's pretty much what got me going. And then, you know, staying on that Guitar Hero is, like, that's why I don't really have one particular influence because as Guitar Hero is set up, is you got a variety of bands to play with or from. And that's how I just got mostly kind of exposed to a lot of layers of types of you know not genres per se but well, actually with every guitar hero you know the bands change a little bit the songs change so any like soft song to like as hard as it gets i mean even through the fire and flames and guitar, you know that a little, classic exactly so it's, hard hero classic. Classic. it's just one of those things that always i wanted to keep pushing myself in the guitar kind of uh spectrum so we ended up buying the guitar with my sister um well, i'm actually a twin sister uh, my twin sister and I ended up hogging the guitar more than anything. So now she doesn't know squat, and I'm over here playing Immortalis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? She don't know um, squat, and you got an album out, so. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the real street. She's still nice here to this day. For yeah. that. So, uh, she could have been Immortalis. Yeah, she could have. Exactly. Yeah, and so, of course, throughout the years, as my guitar, you know, my skills started kind of coming in now. You know, I played Guns N' Roses, and just covering as much as I can get. But really what it came down to, what stood out to me by the time, you know, I hit high school, we started the band. And the, the reason what gravitated, I guess, me towards heavy metal and thrash is just, you know, the way I try to look at myself is I'm always quiet in general. But when I speak, it's kind of like... I, <laughs> I know, we're like laughing say. over here right now. Like, yeah, they this laugh, man. They know that I can just go on and on and on. Like, I'll, I don't know. I wait for my moment. And when it's my moment, everybody else, shut up. Done. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, and it's just, uh, you know, Black Sabbath fucking was my number one, probably, as far as the simplicity but yeah. just the impact and like just the weight that it holds. And that's what always stood out to me as like, it's just God tier to me. And like, I, even the solos, they're nothing crazy fancy, but I do also remember wanting to like really up the ante when I became exposed to like guitars, like Paul Gilbert, Steve Vai, Yngwie Malmsteen, uh, Eddie Van Halen, all that kind of stuff. And then, one day I'll get there. I'm still working towards it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but at the same time, it's kind of like, I'm not trying to like, you know, push myself to like, or how do you say, set myself up for failure. Well, I still want to get better and better. But that's why, like I said, I'm going to kind of dial it back down to like, you know, Tony and Omi. It's just, it's, it's just fucking insane. Like what he could do with so little. And yeah. how, again, the weight that it holds. Yeah. Like, overall, I, mean, I love Foo Fighters. I, I, oh, I dude, Foo Fighters. Band. Rest in peace, Taylor. Rest, rest, rest in peace. peace. Yeah. Love yeah. Taylor. Rest peace. Um, no, when you, you know, you talk about a band like Black Sabbath too, uh, the simplicity of, of how that band arrived on the scene. Um, started a new genre of music you know what i mean the heavy metal genre was born and the fact that you know you got an you got a guitarist like tony iomi who is hands down arguably one of the greatest guitar players to ever lived you know with his iconic sound and everything and fast forward to 2022 and we got a band like mortalis now coming in fresh with their own sound you know what i mean it's like it, 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 there's the influence that you hear in the songs but it's also the originality that you hear of the lyrics and of, of the music. So I, I think that's what this community needs more than ever right now is, is something new, original, but has that original taste and feel that we all know and love and that we can all vibe with. And that's something I look forward to when I discover new bands, when I go to festivals and I've never even heard of bands. I'm just like, okay, let me, let me give them a shot. Let me give them a couple songs and let me see. With you guys, it, it took me one song and then I, looked, I listened to the rest and I was like, Wow. Nice. I'm blown away. Wow, yeah. And definitely, that's what um, this album, that's kind of what it is. It's just like a collection of uh, songs that sound a lot like what we're influenced by because it's what we were all kind of listening to at the time and we're all starting off with our instruments, at least me and Lewis at the time. And yeah, it's really just a, a showcase of this is what we like and this is what we're going to play pretty much. Right. Yeah. Right, I still right. find it funny just because when we first started like, at your backyard, I still think about it all the time. Yeah, 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 no, it was like playing <laughs> fucking horrible, like one, two beats. And even then, like um, when Vince, when he was originally joining the band and he was only playing like 
be how many chords could you even play when i first like invited you over i, don't know, I knew like one song yeah there was only like <laughs> one song he knew and it's like yeah now that we're like coming out and with so much like time now it, it feels really good to kind of see like how we've all like progressed over since when we first started and kind of where we are now um i think the biggest thing for me i always give this metaphor when people um especially because a lot of what you're describing is a lot what we get from um, others is like that same exact feeling of like you know what you guys are, are still playing having this original sound but it still reminds me of that like golden age of things so i always remind honestly like it's super cheesy but i always say it's like that ratatouille dish where he like gives it and he bites into it and it's just like it flashes back, yeah. back over to that yeah. and that's that's yeah. the that's i always give that um that same impression over to everybody because i tell them that because i'm like it's cheesy but i think that's like the best way to kind of put it where it's yeah. like we make it new and we're doing it now but it still gives that like feeling of home and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. and and that's like the biggest thing that we've gotten. Also, sorry, it totally skipped your uh, no, no, no. We'll, your, your we'll influence stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's also why uh, we named it from the cryogenics is because uh, it's kind of like this music was frozen in the past, and now it's finally coming. It's out. coming out. I, yeah. have to, I have to insert this. Some would even say it was locked in Hangar 18. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. But um, yeah. So going to my influences, I guess. Um, so, similar to Austin, I wasn't really into music in the beginning. Uh, just kind of listening to whatever was on the radio. Like, my parents would put on Jack FM all the time, so I'd be listening to oldies all the time. Uh, my brother was super into Slipknot, so we'd be listening to that while playing Resident Evil 4. Oh. So I'd be freaked out. Good, good <laughs> choice of uh, music and game. I love it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Good, good pairing. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, like, I'd listen to whatever my brother was playing or just into at the time. And, yeah, whatever was on the radio. And it wasn't until later in high school when I started getting more into um, music, uh, and particularly I started getting into anime music at first. Nice. So, yeah, I was getting a lot like into anime, like wanting to play music because of anime, and then um, it also turned into oh, uh, I mean, there's other bands that I'm more into now. Like I started getting into grunge, like Nirvana, um, Alice in Chains, and stuff. And then I saw Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, and I was like, all right, I'm going to get a bass. That's yeah. it right there. Nice. I think that's what sold me on buying a bass. I was like, I want to be just like Scott Pilgrim. I need a exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, it's a good nice, inspiration. Nice. That yeah. is right there. Sex ball exactly. bomb, let's do so it. It comes with fighting a bunch of dudes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's a lot of like anime and uh, movies that like really inspired me to want to pick up the bass. And also, I just love the bass. And I when I usually listen to music, I'm always listening to the bass for whatever reason. It's, I just love it. It's just pronounced. It's there. I love funk music because you're hearing the bass all the time. Um, I dig and it. then, yeah, uh, moving on to, like, when I met these guys, uh, they basically converted me into listening to thrash metal. <laughs> we kidnapped them. <laughs> Brainwashed me, actually, I should say. It was like that scene from Clockwork Orange. They, like, forced your eyes open the entire time. <laughs> yeah, 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 pretty dude. much. They just tape me up. And, yeah. like, and it's just old Metallica videos on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, old Anthrax. <laughs> yeah, it's, Cliff, it's just Cliff Burton I mean, over and over. Yeah. Exactly. And so they got me into Kill 'Em All, and it's my favorite album. Yep. Um, and then from there, it was Anthrax, and then Slayer, and then Megadeth, and then just I just kept going from there, and then... Uh, my biggest influencers are Cliff Burton, uh, Frank Bello, sadly, Dave Allison. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, the it, tragedy. I mean, hey, separate him from the music he made, and the music's absolutely top tier. I mean, still. So, yeah, I'm like, um, down. Flea, uh, Jacob Pastoris, and yeah, those are like my main influences at the moment. Yeah. And a lot of anime music. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I mean, no, I, I listen to a lot of that anime music, and I watch covers on YouTube. Hard. It is pretty <laughs> hard to freaking redo that. Like, it, it's yeah, like it a, it's almost like a one and done thing. It's like we got it right in the studio the first time. We're never doing that. <laughs> exactly. You know? Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's well to me though. Yeah, because I'm like, no. When I listen to Japanese music, they're like on a totally different, like totally technical different level, level oh, and it's yeah, like yeah. I can't read any of the words that are on here. But hey, you know what? That bass line, those drum, three, it's four times, it's yeah. like some. Ra 
Yeah, it's like it's I mean, it slaps pretty hard. Why, why do you think Marty Friedman went to go make his career in Japan? Because <laughs> yeah, that's why Marty Friedman so left. good. He's like you know what? Yeah, I need real music. Yeah, he's so good. He was just like America. Uh, let me just go to Japan where they're doing the real stuff. Exactly. That's why he's there now. That's why we sold all our CDs in Japan. Exactly. That's why we sold our stuff. <laughs> he in bought Japan. them all. That's yeah, yeah. Marty, oh, bro, the overseas crowds just love heavy metal music, bro. You watch all these festivals yeah. like the Dunnington Festival. Everything, man. Resurrection yeah, Fest, like all that. Yeah, I mean, the crowds are so nuts there. It makes me so jealous that I'm not part of that crowd. <laughs> it is like, wild. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, especially it's crazy. You know, we live obviously we're in LA County, and California. LA is it's an oversaturated place. So every single hour of every single day, you could probably be at a gig somewhere, whether it's punk or thrash or crossover or yeah. Yeah. something. So. You know, the thing is that when you get into those other places that maybe don't have festivals as often or they don't have shows as much, I mean, I've heard from so many people that just within the U.S. at least, playing other states can be so much more fun because it's just those people don't get a show super often. So when they do, they take advantage of it. Yeah. And so that's what happens in a lot of those other countries, and it, whether you're in Europe or Asia, places like that. They don't have maybe as many shows, but when they have them, they're just popping off. Yeah. yeah. I think, I so think the next step Japan. for you guys, I need to see you guys. It's one of my favorite local venues. I need to see you guys at the Santa Fe Spring Swap. Hey, oh, yo. Alrighty. That brand right? new stage we'll set it up. is calling your guys' Seriously. name, man. If anyone knows how to get us there, hit us get up. Us get up. us up. Yeah. Santa Fe Spring we can... Swap, are you watching? <laughs> yeah. You guys booked a gig. I love buying the band shirts from there. Let me talk to yeah. yeah. my yeah. friends yeah. over at Made in USA. I'm thinking we can work something as an opener, maybe. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> there we go. That'd be um, great. Yeah. Um, no, but I, I think it's cool. You guys... Everyone has their influences. Everyone has their, their past as to where they get. And all your influences, all your past led to one thing and one thing only, and that's forming this band, releasing this album, and now promoting said album and getting it out there to the world to hear. Um, you guys are already making a name for yourselves overseas, so that means that you guys are coming, you know, good in the underground level right now, and it's it's slowly coming up, rising. You guys are saying it's, it's going even faster than expected, you know what I mean? You guys are just getting compliments left and right. People are commenting on the TikTok videos. People are liking all the posts on Instagram. You know, People are checking you guys out on YouTube, Spotify, anywhere they can hear the music. They're buying the CDs and everything. So you're seeing progression happen. Um, now, that being said, looking forward to the future. I mean, I know you guys got a couple of gigs coming up, one being at the Viper Room. I mean, mm -hmm. personally, I've never been to that venue yet. So if I can be, if my first time at that venue is to see you guys, I think that'd be quite the honor. Yeah. You you should be getting in there before you know yeah, anything you happens down, to it yeah. because yeah. Uh, it might. We don't know exactly 100. percent You know, it's all speculation. But the, a lot of that area, I believe, on that block or something like that, or maybe just there. I'm not exactly sure how large, but got bought up by somebody, and they were wanting to. Turn it into some twelve-story something, yeah, something, kind of a bunch of stuff. So it's yeah, exactly it's something not worth it. <laughs> something not nearly as great as the Viper Room. <laughs> so if somebody wants to get, I mean, honestly, just go to, whether it's to see us or see somebody else. Obviously, come see us. Yeah. But you should go <laughs> yeah. over, just go over to the Viper Room so you can say, hey, you know what? I went there. So you can tell your kids yeah. I saw shows there because it's a great place. I mean, we played there. We played there twice. We've seen other bands there. It's a ton of fun. We know I mean, just the history behind it. Just, just the history and everything. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, all those places on, on the Sunset Strip are great, but I mean, it's just it's it's a fun place to play, and we love playing there. So we're we're glad that we had another chance to play there with the Hell Saw in June. That'll yeah. be a ton of fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, because I know as of this recording. Uh, you guys got two shows ahead, but when this gets released, it will be that June show. But you've had that mm -hmm. that April show as well coming up uh, this yeah. weekend, actually. Um, yep. So good luck to you guys, and uh, I know this is going to come out after, but hopefully the show was great. I hope you guys had a great show. I hope the fans were going I'm sure it will be. Guys. We'll always put on a good show. Yeah. 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 Hey, yo. Hope the pit was going strong, you know. If you fall, always. if someone falls down, we pick them back up. That's the, you know, oh, that's oh, oh my God. Okay. 100%. Quick story, just speaking on that, because <laughs> yesterday <laughs> it was a – it was something to it's behold. Quite a bit of pitting. <laughs> yeah, no. There, there was some pitting, right? So, you know, it's like a skate park gig. It's, we, you know, we, we played like a bunch of these before. So, it's like, yeah, you know what? We're going to go play. It's going to be a good time. All that kind of good stuff. You know, it, it was great. We were seeing our friends all play. And it was like a really nice, like, get together. All this kind of stuff. Um, so, you know, we're seeing one of our um, other friend, uh, our other, you know, friends band play right now. And they're going fucking That's ham. Uh, no, they, it was actually Ophidia. Okay. Our, our video, friends at yeah. Ophidia, yes, they are an excellent band. Great, too. we love playing with them. Yeah, yeah, they're really great peeps. Uh, shout out to Jaime. Um, but we're, we're seeing them play, right? They're going ham. They, these guys play like death metal, death core, and then they're they're going crazy. The nice. pit is going wild. Yeah, yeah they remind me of Lamb of God. 
Yeah, well, they're, they're they're just super good. Like um, high high tech high technicality, all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, you, we see the crowd and they're like, God, they're jumping around, they're throwing heads, and they're doing all this kind of crazy stuff. And then uh, you know, it's like maybe I want to say. 10 15 minutes into the set somewhere around there and uh, we just see some you know some kid like come out of the come out of the pit real quick and we see his arm and it's a little it's a little twisty oh. we're like what the heck what? yeah 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 we're like oh well, we're talking, I wonder like what... the scene from harry potter where his arm's all fucked up <laughs> <laughs> Bro, <laughs> yo dude yeah. Uh, yeah. dude it was yeah, 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 yeah. You, uh, yeah, you might not have seen it. Yeah, I saw, the, I saw the video. Somebody uh, snapped their arm pretty good. Oh, yeah, they, they broke their arm, bro. It was wild. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah, so apparently that like at some point during the pit, like they're going around and they're like, you know, they're going crazy and then they had it. But some some kid like threw his hand in, I guess, and just straight snapped through. Yeah. And we're like, oh my god! So uh, everybody was helping him out and getting getting him out of there, stuff like that. It's just crazy. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. God, it, yeah. It, was, it was a it was a crazy time, but it, it was. <laughs> I mean that to that kid, you are a trooper because yeah, he was going out of there. Scar there was like, out. there was no tears, there was no yeah, nothing. Yep. He was going over there. They, they were telling me afterwards because the guys from Ophidia, like their friends or whatever, were helping him get out. Um, I guess over to the hospital and stuff. But I guess they were like, he was calling his mom or something like that. <laughs> He's like, uh, "Mom, you know my arm's kind of broken," and she started Kinda. immediately yelling and being like, "I know you want to go see those other bands and all this." <laughs> and then he started lying and being like, "No, mom, I, I was, was just, skating, I, I was skating." I was I was just hanging that's out. The beauty of that show is you can literally, if you got injured, you could just say, I was on a skateboard trying to do something. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's probably why he took it so well. because he was a skater, you know. I mean, they're always breaking wrists, breaking arms, something yeah. like that. So he took it that well because of it. Yeah. That's how you get away. If mom and dad asked, you were just skateboarding, trying to do a trick, and it didn't go well. <laughs> it didn't go well. Exactly. All the kids out there. You playing in the background that you were jamming out to while skating. Exactly. Hey, yo. Yeah. Hey, yo. It's just a coincidence. It's just a coincidence. Ouch. Oh, yeah. Man. No, that was a yeah. that was a wild story. Yeah. That Shout was a wild out to time. that kid. If you're if you're listening, you're watching. I'm um, hoping for a speedy recovery so we can see you back in the pit. Same oh yeah. Yes. Yes. Likewise. Likewise. That was that was wild stuff. But yeah. Oh man. Um. So June 16th, the Viper Room. You're not gonna want to miss Mortalis. I guarantee you. It sounds just as great, if not better, in concert than it does on the album. Hundred percent. Hundred put on a good show for you guys. Yeah, yeah exactly. And the Viper is a fun place to play. We get our energy going. We get, I mean, it's honestly like, you know, it, you see, you know, some of our clips on like our account and stuff like that. Those shows are so much fun to play. When you've got a good stage, you've got good sound people, you've got a good bar, you got a good crowd. That's where we can get into our element the most. So honestly, seeing us somewhere there, that's one of the best spots that you can do it. It's just, it's always a great time. And if yeah. you come, Lewis will take off his shirt. Oh, hey, yeah, yeah, I, I, exactly. Yeah, when you, you start a chant in the crowd, shirt's coming off. <laughs> shirt's coming off. <laughs> <laughs> shit, I may even yeah. do it in the in the pit. You know, you start. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yo, fucking, okay. here we go. Let's fucking wave that shit in the air. And let's <laughs> let's, let's go. go. You know what I'm saying? Hey, oh yo, man. We're so, do I mean, you know, normally what we cover on this channel is horror and the SoCal haunt scene, but I've always said, and you guys may agree with this. Metal and horror go hand in hand. They are. Yeah. Yep. Yes, yeah. they do. Look at all the horror movies that have come out. Look at a lot of metal soundtrack. For example, when I watched the the remake of It, and I heard Anthrax as they were doing oh, yeah. rock. Oh, oh hell yeah. yeah! I was like, you couldn't. Have I was headbanging. It. It's a better. Perfect. There's no other song. That's it right there. You know what I mean? I just remember being in the movie theater like, no fucking way. Yeah. 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 We can start moshing in the theater. Yeah. We're going to do some chair moshing, bro. Let's go. <laughs> Yo. Open up the pit. Open up. Open up the pit. Open up. Oh, man. But, I mean, I'm just saying, horror and metal go hand in hand. So when I when I found yeah. out about your guys' band, when I found out about you guys and everything, I was like, I have to have them on the show. I have to give them, hopefully, some more promotion out there. Hopefully, someone will watch this and, and sign them. Hopefully, we can get them on tour even quicker. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. I would love to see you guys. Not only you know, you always you're already showing some home hometown love here in California, but I would love to see what the rest of the world and the rest of the crowds think about you guys because it's probably going to be amazing responses out there. Um, so I can't wait to see what you guys do. So that being said, as far as you know, hopefully we get some tours in the future. Um, what is the dream venue you guys would love to play at? You can do it individually. What What is your dream venue that you want to play at? Anywhere in the world. Dang. I just want to play in Japan. There you go. Wherever. It'd be fun. I mean, honestly, Japan, it'd be a fun country to visit. It'd be a fun show to play. That'd be pretty good. It's one of SOD's only live album, I'm just saying. 
Hey, yo, hey, the cultured man over here. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, honestly, for me, I, dude, I would, uh, I mean, originally, even then, I think it's so partially, like, my dream to want to go play at, at Bakken. I mean, we just ended up doing, like, two rounds of the Battle of the Bands, and unfortunately, you know, it, it didn't, we didn't get to go all the full, the full mile and, you know, win to get to Nationals, but, I mean, in terms of, like, what the experience that we got out of it, fantastic. We made a lot of new connections too, and it was like a really great experience. But uh, I think now, when I think about it, I would like love to play Rock and Rio. That's the nice. one. Yeah. yeah, Rock and Rio. I'm not sure if, cool. if anyone knows that, but that's like one of the few like uh, big like uh, music festivals down south. And it's like it's an all encompassing thing. So you got multiple different genres and all that stuff. But yeah, like we were talking about it earlier, right? Where it's like uh, on this, you know, how how different um, areas geographically, like you know, how they how they feel about like metal and all that kind of stuff. And down south is the place to be for like oh, metal. Like I remember even to Brazil. Yeah, <laughs> come to Brazil. <laughs> but, yeah, like oh, Chile, yeah. all those areas down there and stuff. Like they go crazy. That's where like all these bands like film their music videos and stuff. But I would love to play there. That would be such a, a cool place to play. Good one. You know, a Ferris wheel. Oh, yeah. yeah, the, the yeah. wave of people, all that kind of stuff yeah. would be awesome. Yeah, same. I think, yeah, because I know it's, uh, I mean, I'm not even familiar with every, you know, uh, venue and or stage that there is out there. But definitely rock and reel. Just because of the fact that I saw the live performances of uh, Iron Maiden and Slipknot. Yeah. Which, you know, you know they back up and everything, you know. I mean, even just, I, I remember when I'm hearing Corey Taylor just be like, rock and reel. Oh. Just fucking hearing the crowd go fucking wild. It's like, that's where I want to be. Where, yeah, like, yeah. that energy is all about, like, you know, there you go. matched, if not better, or whatever in other places. But, again, like, that's synonymous to in my head. So, like, that's that's a goal for me. I dig it, man. I, I hope I hope I get to see you guys one, there, one of these days there. I really do. I, hope I, I have a feeling it's going to be sooner rather than later. If you guys oh, yeah, can we'll, we'll get those VIP passes ready. Bro. Hey, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, like, <laughs> someone did, like, live you. interview backstage, you know? Hey, go. yo, that would be lit. Let's, Let's do it, it, man. I'm down. No, but um, I'm going to make I'm going to say it right now because I, I want to make it to that June 16th show. That's what I want to do. I'm encouraging the entire Knights of Horror community. Go on the Mortalis Instagram page right now. Um, find out all the details that you can about the, that, that next coming gig. Get your tickets. Let's have a meetup. Let's let's show Metallica some support. You know. Let's, let's let's do do Thank yeah. you for that. Follow yeah. us on all our uh, streaming platforms and all that. I mean, yeah. Even just if you, for those who come to the show, I mean, we generally love to stick around. Oh or yeah. Show up as early as possible, just so we can get to like meet everybody. Hang I mean, out, like, chill, sign stuff, talk to people. Buy us drinks. Yeah. yeah. Buy us like, again, like quick shout out to Lucas uh, and on his dad for coming out yesterday at the skate park. Mm -hmm. Came mean, from LA. Again, you yeah. Know, it's just little things like that that we want to, like, just as much show our appreciation because, I mean, stuff like that is what humbles us to, like, again, do what we do, love to do it for that very reason. We love to inspire right. people, right. you know. I mean, he's the, he's the next generation of heavy metal as far as yeah. Like you said, 100%. Black Sabbath started something, maybe we could start something. You're starting a whole new no, a whole new revolution, man. There we go. <laughs> I like it. I love it. I love to see it. I love to hear it, man. You guys keep making that music. I'll keep listening, man. Um, you know, I gotta say this right now too. It's a little. I'm gonna throw a little shade to my uh, my competitors that I fight every year. <laughs> Let's do it. I'm gonna need a theme song this year, right? I'm gonna need a theme song this year, and I'm looking at Mortalis to to be that theme song. Oh, oh yo. because you know, I uh, I got a belt that I have to put on the line every single year. Oh, Ooh, and, uh, you know, oh and, damn! And last year's competition ended in a tie. Me and this group TLEV of a try not to get scared challenge at the haunts. So this year, I think with the help of Mortalis, I, I can actually win and become a three-time champion. Let's go! This is the first time we're even debuting the belt on the channel. So, I mean, <laughs> oh, damn! Yeah, let's go! Right there, the Try Not to Get Scared Championship, man. <laughs> All right. Well, I we can work with you on that. So I, I, I got this in the bag. Oh, yeah, yeah, 100%. We got you. We got you. 100%. Well, gentlemen, we win it. Uh, happy Easter for one, and thank you for taking the time out of your guys' day to even, you know, do this, man. I mean, we've been talking about doing this for some time, and uh, I'm glad we finally got to do it. I'm, finally, I'm glad we got to finally uh, showcase the band, the history, and, and just where we're going in the future, man. I can't wait to see what you guys do and, and what you guys produce next. Um, definitely go follow them on Instagram at Mortalis. Official. Go check yep. them out. 
Go check out the new album out right now. Anywhere you can stream it, anywhere even buy the CD. Um, I know one person that if you guys were to ever release vinyl, he would buy it for his collection because he's a big vinyl guy. So I know that's probably something you guys thought about. So I'm ready. I'm ready to see it. But uh, until then, just just anywhere you can find their music, listen to it. I guarantee you, you'll be impressed with it. Yeah, you really should. Thank, thank you. Yeah, thank thank you, you for having us on. Yeah, yes. big shout out to you, man. Uh, channels like yours are pretty much what keep this scene alive and keep like you know this community like continuing and moving forward. So big shout out to yourself, my man. Thank you so much for having us on. Man, I'm real. Uh, thank you guys. I appreciate it. You guys are keeping heavy metal alive. I think we need that more than anything right now. And uh, it's it's just good to hear something new and something fresh and authentic and and still sounds like the original things that I that I know and love. And and that goes for many people that I talk to about this, especially the Haunt community. I know they listen to a lot of metal. I've been trying to put it into people's ears, be like, hey, you gotta listen to this band. Trust me, you're gonna love them. <laughs> I'm like, you want to get pumped up before you go out there and scare the shit out of people? You listen to this band. There you go. <laughs> oh, that's, that's just great. Again, with the reception of everything with the album release, I mean, just how far we've come. Again, we are humbled by everyone's just uh, compliments. Uh, support, all the, yeah, all the support. it's ne- the never ending support and compliments and all the love that we get. You know, we do it for you guys. Yeah, hundred percent. And we we love it, and we we try to feed the energy back with the pit, with the with the noise, with the cheers. To show our appreciation to you guys. So thank you guys. Keep doing what you guys are doing. Keep heavy metal alive. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you guys enjoyed today's episode, be sure to hit that like button and leave some comments down for Mortalis. Let them know you like their music, man, because uh, they, they worked really hard on it, and it sounds great, and I can't wait to see what's what's next with them. Um, go ahead and follow them on Instagram at Mortalis Official. Follow us on Instagram at The Knights of Horror and on Twitter at Knights of Horror. Subscribe to the channel with that bell notification where every time we put up a new video, Ladies and gentlemen, we one are. Last time, my guest, we are Mortalis. Mortalis! <laughs> baby, the Almighty Mortalis is in the house on the podcast. We love each and every one of you. Y'all stay safe out there, and we'll see you guys next time for another podcast. Fuck yeah! Woo-hoo. Later.